Okay, what is going on, Print Fam? It is Cam here. Uh, it has been a minute since I have actively reached out to you guys. I apologize for that. Uh, I gotta admit, it's mainly been out of embarrassment. We have been working on these overall, what are really minor updates, but for, especially with the UI changes and some of the things we did to the Matrix, or the main thing we did to the Matrix, it took so much longer than expected and out of pure embarrassment I've just kind of went radio silent uh, there really are no excuses that's that's the the real of the whole thing so I apologize for that but we finally do have the updates uh, and we're doing things slightly different this time instead of just pushing it to you to the main use login that you guys use to run business on a daily basis we've created a separate login and it's called beta.theprintlife.com so this is going to be active only for two weeks so what we're going to do is we have we need you to go to beta.theprintlife.com and log in using the same login that you use for your your main dashboard and run through generating a quote setting up settings make any changes that you need to and uh report or submit any bugs to us through the uh, the ticket system uh, and this is only going to be going for two weeks two weeks so get in there g give us the feedback let us know anything that's not working or anything like that and uh, we will get it fixed within that timeline but at the end of the two weeks login.theprintlife.com will be converted to this now some some information about that if you're using beta.theprintlife.com, if you create a new client, if you if you create a quote or an invoice to send it to a customer, it will still it'll be active when they convert over. So anything you create in beta will be there for you uh, when we switch over to the main site. So just keep that in mind. But you only got two weeks, so get in there because this is going live in two weeks, regardless whether we get no feedback or a bunch of feedback. So it's better for you guys to get in there and test it and give us the feedback so we can fix it. Uh, because it is going to go live regardless. Okay, that's it. You got two weeks from today. All right. So you'll there are. I want to just do. A, I'm going to do a quick, as quick as I can, a rundown of the major changes, so that you guys are aware of what's going on. Uh, I'm going to try to do this quick and efficient. First things first. Right out of the gate, you'll notice that the UI is is different. The it was the first version was colorful. It was fun, but. I think we got a lot of feedback just that it wasn't maybe professional. It, it didn't look good in a professional environment. And so we kind of listened to that, and we've just pulled the colors back and made it more of a minimalist, simple design. But the big reason for the UI update was actually so that moving forward, we can make we can add features, essentially. We have the room in the pages and in the different blocks displaying different information to add features moving forward. That was the real reason for it. Uh, you'll also notice invoices. The dashboard has been removed. We're trying to minimize the amount of uh, items over here on the left menu. So now the invoices has both of your, your production dashboard and your invoice list here. Uh, and the reason we did this is because now you have a production dashboard and we're going to be creating a second dashboard for quotes that will let you track, uh, you know, when you sent an email, if it's been read, and then it'll, you'll be able to automate a lot of things with that. So we're, we're going to be working on that soon. Uh, let's see here. So those are the changes with that. The first thing I want to go over, let's just get right to it, is the customer portal is now live. What the customer portal is, is a tool that you can put in front of your customers and you can link to it from your website so that your customers can essentially write their own quotes. Um, they here's, here's where you do it. You go to settings, go to under general settings, business info, and you'll see in a section called customer portal URL. Um, enter your shop name. In this case, I have Monument LTD, and then the remaining URL will be .projects-builder.app. Uh, once you have that, hit save. And then you can now copy this link, and uh, I'm going to go Control V, and I'm going to paste that link in there. And now this is what y your customers will see when they link to it from your website. So you get that link, go to your website, create a button that links, opens a new tab to this tool. 
uh, I want to say this this software was originally built with this tool in mind what I wanted I was using at the time I was using Inksoft as a production manager and all these different things I thought when I signed up with Inksoft that all my customers were going to use that dang uh, design lab and everything would be great and I would have to do no work that's just not true the, if if customers want a design lab, the, the harsh reality is they're just going to go to Custom Ink because Custom Ink's design lab is the best. That's it, period. Uh, it's kind of harsh to say for a lot of people, but that just sort of is the reality in 90% of cases. There are specific use cases where that's not true, but for the most part, that's it. What this tool is, is really it's a visual quote form. And that's what it was always designed to be. It's not a, a mock-up generator. It's not a design lab. But what it does do is puts the necessary information in front of your customers so that they can browse your product catalog. They can select their colors. Uh, they can create an account. They can log into that account to view jobs in progress. They can view saved quotes. They can edit quotes. They can make payments, all of that stuff, without ever having to call you or email you. They're in control of their order for the most part. You set up the boundaries on the back end, and then based on those boundaries, those, the customers can get quotes and, and set up a quote and then pay that quote, and it's an invoice, and it goes to your production dashboard, and then now you start printing it. That's the whole idea behind it. And I am going to say that I wasn't sure if it would work when I launched it, but it worked like a charm, especially if I had a customer call me and I would say something like, hey, awesome, are you near a computer? And they would say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd say, oh, cool, well, we have this really neat tool. Uh, let me walk you through how to use it so that you can get quotes quickly if you ever need to uh, and you're not in the mood to call and talk to me. So I would walk them through using the tool. I'd show them how to view the items, how to add them to the project. Uh, I would you know, tell them how to input the quantities and all that kind of good stuff. And once they knew how to do this, it was mind-boggling for me. Like I thought some customers would use it. I had no idea the level to which it would work in my in my shop. And I don't I can't say for 100% certainty it'll work for you in your shop, but for me I found that once customers knew that I exist, knew that someone was on the other end and they knew how to use this tool, I would uh, leave for the day and I'd come back and there would be three invoices on my production dashboard that were filled out by customers that were priced accurately. The customer had uploaded the proper artwork to the proper locations. Uh, they specified their widths and their heights and their distances and their placement and it was just like getting free money because most of you printers know man at the end of the day printing the job is tough and, and it's it's hard work and all that stuff but you know dealing with the customers and the back and forth and the emails and the phone calls and the oh crap I forgot to get how wide the, how wide they wanted this printed oh shoot I forgot to specify whether they wanted burgundy or bright red when you can remove all of that from the equation running a print shop becomes a hundred percent easier and that's essentially what this thing does so uh, the customer portal is here. Uh, it's 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 incredible. I recommend that you utilize it and and start utilizing it uh, uh, right away. Okay, so the customer portal is now live. You guys know how to use that. Um, let me. Th I'm trying to think. Uh, another big one was under matrixes. Go to matrix matrix group. It, up to this point, you had a running system quantity range, <clears throat> and it was built that way. Because the software was originally just going to be for screen printing. I, you know, it was for my shop. I built it and I just kind of made it available to everybody. But it was um, just for screen printing. So the, you didn't need a bunch of different quantity ranges. Uh, now, with the ability to quote embroidery and direct to film and direct to garment, that, that has changed. And it required, not that you guys care, but it required a lot of work on our part. We had to rebuild the matrices again and the databases and everything to work this way. This was what really took so much time to get it to work for such a small feature. It's infuriating. Not that you care. I'm just telling you why it took so long. Uh, so now, under item markup, it has a system quantity range for all of your items, for SNS, for Sanmar, blah, 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 whatever. That, there, you, prob you only need one range for that. And you'll see that at the top. But now, under each group that you create, each group will have its own quantity range. So you can have different minimum quantities. Say for screen printing, you may uh, have a minimum quantity of 12. So under the screen printing, you, you know you, that's your quantity range. Uh, but now under embroidery, you may have a minimum, minimum quantity of 1. 
in which case you can have a distant, different quantity range for that. And it, it'll be represented on both the customer portal and the quoting tool as you're writing and assembling quotes. So uh, this is a big change. It, see, it's, it, it appears small, but it, it, was, it took a lot on our end, and now it's here. So I'm very happy that this dang thing is finally done, and uh, it's going to work for you guys. So system quantity ranges for each matrix group. That was a big change that we did. That was the main one, actually, other than the UI redesign. Uh, oh, yeah, on top of that, we now have a search bar at the top. We got rid of all that redundant information that nobody used, and we put this in here instead. So what you can do is simply come in here and start typing, say, a customer's name. Like, let's look for me. It'll show any the top three most relevant searches, and then it'll also show the top uh, three quotes and invoices, the most relevant searches for that as well. So you can click on the, the name of the client account, and it'll take you to the new client's account. Uh, uh, speaking of client accounts, we've added users. So now you can have one account, say for let's say, let's say for my shop, for Monument Limited, or whatever. And then within that account, you can add multiple users now. So you can come in and you can add a users with different names, different phone numbers, different departments, different emails, all that kind of stuff. And you could create logins for each one of those users, and they can also. Uh, create their own passwords and stuff for that so you now have multiple users under one account but this was highly requested it is here now uh, it's ready to go and you'll see that there's just a slight redesign of the customer accounts it looks better it's a little more it's a little better laid out um, okay let me look at the change log here what else have we got the other big thing is just the uh, the overall layout of the the project builder you'll see that the the um, let me reload this stupid thing real quick. <laughs> Hang on here. Yeah, you'll see that the uh, the project builder has changed slightly. So now the the action bar is at the bottom and it's floating, so it's always available. We also added back and next buttons. And uh, that's that's mainly it. Everything else has just been kind of a little bit more minimalist and whatnot. Uh, the pop-ups are now full screen as well. Uh, this is just I just kind of wanted to keep the customer focused on what they're working on, and then you can see the actions change on the action bar based on where you're at in the thing. So if you select whatever, we're just going to select a navy shirt here. I'm going to add the item, and then it switches back to this bar. Uh, also, the layout to the input quantities has changed, and it now shows the item price, the impression, and then the total for each item. And it does take time to update there, so keep that in mind. Uh, let's see what else, what else, what else, what else. Let's add a location here so you can see what's going on with this. Main changes are over here. We removed the left buttons, and we've put them here in a drop-down instead for all the different decoration methods. So it's just, it's all the actions are on, on just one side, so you're not having to bounce back and forth, which made a lot more sense, I think. Uh, color swatches are mostly the same, but now... They span the full width over here. This was just uh, one so we could have the white bar on the bottom and showcase that. But also, just so it doesn't, I don't know, it looks more even when they span the full width. It was a design choice. Maybe you'll love it, maybe you'll hate it, but that's the way it is now. Everything else is more or less the same here. Uh, let's see. Finishings are still pretty much the same. Uh, what else, what else, what else, what else? Oh, yeah. A uh, couple of other things. So you can now do the price override. So although you know your item price and your impression cost may be one, you may have a customer that you've just been charging ten bucks a shirt for for five years, and you're not ready to change that, even though you know you're losing money, and that's that's a horrible idea, you know. But whatever, uh, you want to change it to ten bucks, so you can now override the price, which was very much requested. Uh, now when you click, you'll also notice that the action bar now changes based on it. So we're at the final step. So instead of going next, it's just save. So you're going to save it, uh, add it to a customer's account. And uh, you're going to assign that. Okay, and then once it's been saved, I want to, there's a few other things that you can do. Once you save the quote to a customer's account, you can now add a title to a quote. So, Cam's quote. And this, this title will show up on the job cards. 
as well as right here, you know, and in different places and on the quotes menu and all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, la, 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 la. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, yes. Another thing. And this is more from the production point of view, but we've added check boxes. So uh, well, let's convert this to a, an invoice and I'll show you. So now we're going to go to checkout. This thing is kind of bogging down here because we're on this stupid test server. Let's see. So we're signing it to that to that account. Uh, customer pickup. The, the the checkout page has changed slightly. It's more simplified just to keep them focused on on it as a you know just moving forward. They can select their different payment options. Or you from this point we're on the admin, so we're doing it. Uh, verify all of that, and then it's going to proceed to payment. And I'm converting this to an invoice to show you the other changes we've made. So st your, your customers still do select from your preset turnaround times. And this is smart because you're putting it in their hands. They have to acknowledge if they, if they need it in seven days. They're acknowledging they need it in seven days and that they're willing to pay more for it. But there are circumstances where you need to change the date. This has been requested. So now after it has been paid or it's a, it's a paid quote or invoice, you can come up here to the delivery date and you can adjust it. So you can switch it to, to two days later or whatever. Uh, come down here to more actions, hit hit save invoice, and now the delivery date has changed. That will be reflected in the uh, invoice dashboard and blah 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 blah. So that's that was another big change that we made. Another thing that we did is uh, this was a, an issue I had as a printer, and my printer is always overlooking shit, like specifically finishing, whether it was folding and bagging, heat press finishing, uh, sewing on labels, whatever the heck it was, the printers would always overlook it. So now what we did is we added this function where, l let's say your customers did opt for folding and bagging. The, the printer should see it. It's right here, uh, and they should and they have to acknowledge it. So you'll know when when the finishings and all the different add-ons have been done because they the printer needs to check it and when it's checked and they hit save if everything has been done the project will show as checked off so if you have multiple projects and they did do folding and bagging on one of them but they didn't do it on the other one and it was opted there then it won't show a check mark so you could tell at a glance if if they've actually finished the damn thing uh, let's see what else here. Oh, and then another thing we added just from an accounting point of view is, you know, it's in an invoice section. You're going to go through it's You're going to order the garments, and then they come in, and you count them in. Well, now we have a ver verified quantity. So as your printer or your, your shop manager or whatever is counting the items in, uh, they can verify what's there. So if there were, if they did get 12 smalls, but they only had 8 here, they, they would just put in 8, which is fine. Oh, I'm sorry. What the heck am I doing? They would input 8. And then hit save. And what this will just let you know is that they counted them in. And when you're looking at it, you'll just, you now know, oh, shoot, we only got eight of these. I need to order more or I need to let the customer know that we need a different color option or whatever it is. It's just a way so that your cut, your printers can go through and verify the count and, and relay that information to you in an efficient manner. So there that is. Uh, I think that's pretty much it, guys. I'm trying to think any other things you should be looking out for and testing. Yeah, the main thing is just to go through, test all these features, look for any bugs or anything that isn't working correctly, submit the ticket, um, and then test the client account or the customer portal. Uh, if there's any information that should be shown or shouldn't be shown or whatever, submit a ticket letting us know what that is and uh, just uh, report any bugs or things that aren't working properly. Again, one more time, this is only going to be in beta for two weeks and then it's going to merge to the main to the main server. So you uh, you need we need your feedback as fast as possible. If you don't log into beta and test it and report the feedback two weeks later, you know, it's it's this is going to be what you're using so just uh get in there and test it so that we can fix it before it's live that's pretty much it guys it's good talking to you thank you for being patient uh now that we have this this kind of set up i'm hoping that our development process will be much faster moving forward <laughs> i always hope that all right guys talk to you later